you can just not beat this weather today. In this video, we are going to discuss using the Canon 16mm RF with both the Canon R6, R7, and Red Komodo. I've been using this Canon 16mm RF 2.8 for almost a year now, pretty much since it was released. And I originally purchased it for the Red Komodo as I needed a really lightweight but wide angle lens that I could use to stick the Komodo on super small gimbals that were smaller than the RS2. But I ended up finding there were a lot of quirks with this lens, especially using it with cameras that shoot raw video. Some of those were a lot of chromatic aberrations, a lot of purple fringing. I just got completely soaked by the water down here and my pants are wet. But anyways, <laughs> after using it with the Komodo, I found out that there were a lot of things that get corrected in RF cameras, especially when shooting JPEG photos or shooting eight or 10 bit video on the R6, R7, but if you shoot with a camera like the C70 or the R5 and you shoot in RAW, just like the Komodo, a lot of these issues, such as the chromatic aberration, purple fringing, and on the full frame cameras, vignetting in all four corners happen. So this is a lens that you really wanna use if you're shooting in these compressed modes with these cameras. Now, it's not to say this lens is completely useless. However, I think because of some of these reasons, the 16 millimeter RF is probably the most hated lens in the Canon RF lens lineup. Okay, so it is a few days later now, and I actually decided it wasn't fair not to test the R7 fully in a vlogging environment. So I brought the R7 with the 16 millimeter out, and we do have image stabilization on, and you notice I have a decent angle right here, but I am using a tripod handle, so it does extend the camera out a nice distance, but I'm not hand-holding it. If I was hand-holding it, we'd be about here comfortably, and as you can tell, that's a pretty close shot right there. Here's a normal vlogging setup I'd use where the camera's just on the tripod. I have the microphone up here. I'm a little bit further away than I'd like to be. We are shooting on a crop sensor, so the two things I'm seeing off the bat, I definitely don't have uh, as blurry of a background as I do when I use the full frame with the 16 millimeter. Uh, and then also, I'm a little bit further back, which may impact sound quality. So that's one of the things I won't know until I get back into the editing room and kind of see how everything sounds right now. I'm, I'd say, about a foot away from the camera, uh, maybe slightly closer to the microphone itself. It's also off to the side. I'll take a picture of it now so I could use for reference later. There are more than uses of vlogging with the 16 millimeter. I've also used it for real estate work. However, I've used it specifically for video. As I mentioned before, it has those fixes in camera. Now again, it does work as a lightweight gimbal setup with the Komodo, but the problem is you have to stop down a decent amount to get rid of a lot of that purple fringing, chromatic aberration, and you don't always wanna have to be stopped down that much. So that's why I find that when using it with cameras that shoot raw, it's just not quite as useful. And then on top of that, there's also, if you're using it on a full frame camera and you're shooting in RAW, there's gonna be heavy vignetting on the corners of this lens that do get fixed when you shoot in JPEG. It seems that the JPEG not only gets rid of a lot of the chromatic aberration, a lot of the issues, but it also stretches out the image so it doesn't look quite as distorted. So just to show you how light and compact this 16 millimeter is, here is the lens in comparison to my finger. And as you can see, pretty small and light, very close in size to the 50 millimeter. And I actually have a VND dedicated for the front filter, just so I don't have to use step up rings. And it keeps this setup still nice and compact while giving me a VND solution. Since as many of you know, with my EF lenses, especially with using the 18 to 35, like I am right here, I use Canon's VND adapter. So it keeps things compact when using EF, but you don't really have that kind of option when using RF. So that's how this little setup works. So as I spoke in today's video, I've used this lens for vlogging. I've also used it for lightweight gimbal setups. The third scenario that I've used this lens for is for travel video and photos. So I really like it, number one, obviously, because of how small and light it is, but number two, because I can really give the camera to anybody. And for the most part, they enjoy using it, especially if they come from using a GoPro as their primary camera, just because of how wide angle this is, especially on full frame. So one of my buddies, Diego, he does like photography. He really likes using the GoPro primarily. And he used this on my R6 and just fell in love because he was getting all the kinds of shots he would get on his GoPro, but getting an actual shallow depth of field when he got up close to subjects, but also being able to get this super wide angle while having a much higher megapixel count, much better dynamic range, just much better quality overall 
in both photos and video and getting that same wide angle look that you get pretty much on a GoPro. For travel videos, travel photos, I've really enjoyed using this. Like I said, it's been great to just be able to toss off the camera to somebody and them get really cool photos or just photos, videos in general without having to work really hard. The IBIS obviously helps when you're moving around a lot and using IBIS, it doesn't help quite as much. Uh, I would say if I can give one tip after using this lens for a while, even after Canon has done their IBIS fixes in both the R6 and R5, the IBIS works best when using this lens if you stay as still as possible. I think you can kind of notice in some of my earlier vlog shots, as I'm moving around, the IBIS definitely works a lot better than it did if you look back way back when I first got the R6. However, there still is some wobble as I move the camera around. So it is best just to kind of keep the camera in one place. And even as you're doing your micro shakes, if you're keeping the camera as still as you can, that's where the IBIS really shines on super wide angle primes or just super wide angle lenses in general on the R6, R5, uh, any of the full frame cameras that have IBIS. I've noticed that those IBIS wobbles aren't as bad on the R7, but we also are using a crop censored camera camera at that point with full frame glass. So there definitely is a lot more glass to stabilize into uh, when using full frame glass on a crop sensor. I have really enjoyed this lens, but as you've seen throughout this video, there are definitely some quirks to it. So it's not quite my go-to lens, but at the same time, I always keep it in my bag just because of how small it is. It's nice to have, especially when traveling or just have in general, if I need to put a small light lens on my setup for gimbal work or whatever it may be, just to keep everything nice and light. It is really nice to have this. And even the Sony version that I'm looking to get with the FX30, which is the 11 millimeter 1.8, you do get a similar depth of field to what you would get using this on a full frame. However, it is a little bit bigger and I don't know how the AF works, so time will tell. I'm definitely going to do a review pitting the 16 millimeter on the R6 versus the 11 millimeter on the FX30, since it's a similar field of view you'll get on both. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions on the 16 millimeter, make sure to put them in the comments below. And if you have any comparisons you wanna see in upcoming videos, whether it has to do with the 16 millimeter, any of my Canon RF cameras, the Komodo, the Sony FX30, make sure to put them down in the comments below as well. And until next time, thank you for watching everybody as always. My name is Jeff Fagan and I will see you in the next video.